Hi, this is Marie, World Peace Knits. So today we're gonna to be making fingerless mitts. We're using um, these two leftover skeins that I have of West Yorkshire Spinners. The light blue is 309 Spearmint. The darker blue is 365 Blueberry Bonbon. We're also going to be using this skein of Kate Celine, and this is a speckly rainbow sherbet is the colorway. And this is her 75, 25, 75% superwash, 25% nylon. So I can't wait to see how this knits up. I am using the two blues, one for the band on the bottom of the fingerless mitt, and then I'm going to be using the speckly one for the main part of the mitt, and then for the top part of the mitt, I'm gonna be using the other color. So let's go ahead and get started, and you can use just one color or multicolors, whatever you'd like. I'm going to use size 2.75 um, needles, and you can either use, I'm gonna be using the DPNs, which are double pointed needles in um, size 2.75 millimeter. You could use one of these um, little nine inch circular in a 2.75 also. So you can use that. And these look like this. They're just like a little circular needle. It's miniature in the size 2.75 and we'll just knit like this. Now some people um, like these and some people don't. So you can use those or um, uh, if you have high high sharps, which are a set of three, you use these just like you use the DPNs and you can um, knit with these. So some people love these too. So I like all of them actually. But I'm gonna be using the DPNs. These I believe are a little easier to find for most people. So I'll show you how to use these and let's get started, I can't wait. Okay, so we'll start with the slip knot. And I'm going to go ahead and do a long tail cast on. You can cast on using whatever method you'd like. And I'm going to cast on 16 stitches on each needle. You can go ahead and cast on all the stitches on one needle and then just transfer them around to the other needles if you'd like, if you find that easier. Okay, so that's 16, our first 16 stitches on this needle. We're gonna pick up the next needle we're going to go ahead and cast on 16 more on this needle. And I just kind of snugged it up against that other needle. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 16, okay. And then pick up the third needle and continue casting on. up the fourth needle okay so we've got 16 stitches on each of the needles we're going to go ahead and make sure that all of the stitches as we look at them are pointed down and we're going to make them in a little square like this. And so we have both of our working yarn, we have our yarn attached to the ball and then our tail. We're going to hold those together. Those will be on this needle right here and we'll put the other needle underneath just like that. We're going to knit this first stitch. This can be tricky, but uh, you'll get it. So holding both of the yarns, we go ahead and we knit and making sure all the stitches are pointed down 
so that they're not twisted. We're going to go ahead and knit that first stitch. And I'm going to knit the first uh, two stitches because we're starting the ribbing, which is knit two, purl two. And I'm using, um, holding both yarns, uh, the tail and the working yarn, just so that I can kind of weave them in a little. So I brought the yarn to the front and I'm going to do a purl, two purls. Okay, so what we have is two knits and two purls with um, holding both yarns together. I'm going to go ahead and drop that tail. So this is my working yarn. I find the yarn that is attached to the ball and that's my working yarn. And my other yarn is my tail. So this yarn is my tail. I'm going to go ahead and trim my tail so that it's a little bit shorter. And make, making sure to trim the tail, not the one attached to the ball. Okay, so we've got our two knits, our two purls, we've got our tail that I trimmed, and then we have our working yarn. So we brought that to the back, and then we're going to go ahead and continue to knit two and purl two all the way around. So we're just using the two needles. Uh, all the other ones are just hanging free. We're just using the two uh, with the working stitches on them. Okay, so we're ending with a purl two, doing knit two, purl two all the way around, bring the yarn to the back, and now we're going to begin working on this next needle, and we're using the free needle. So since we ended on a purl two, we're going to start on a knit two. And then purl two, just continuing on in our pattern, knit two, purl two, bringing the yarn to the back, doing two knits, bringing the yarn to the front, doing purls, back to the back, two knits. To the front, two purls, okay, ending in two purls. So now we're moving to the next needle, bringing the yarn to the back, making sure not to, um, to wrap it around the, the needle, but just to bring it through the two and to the back, starting with two knits on the next needle. So really we're only using two needles at once. It's not, it's not as daunting as it seems. <laughs> Just focus on the two needles that you're using.
Okay, so we're going on to our last needle that hasn't been worked yet. So we ended with two purls as we did on the others. We're going to bring the yarn, it was in the front, we're going to bring it through the two needles to the back. We're going to pick up our needle that's free. Start on two knits. And really, once you get this first row done, it becomes much easier. Two knits, wait a minute. Two knits, two purls, two knits. So one more knit. Okay, ending with two pearls, bringing the yarn to the back. Okay, so now we're back at the beginning of our little square. That looks like this. And because we held those um, the yarn double with the tail in the first four stitches, it's going to seem like pretty thick yarn, but we're going to go ahead and do two knits, just as we normally would bringing the yarn to the front and two purls. And pull down on that tail a little. Okay. And so that is how it looks. Two knits, two purls, and we just continue on with the ribbing until it's the length that we would like it. Okay, I will catch back up with you when I have more ribbing on the needles. Okay, so I am back and this is the length I've decided I want to make the bottom of my fingerless mitt. So I'm going to go ahead and this right here, this uh, tail signifies where I began the round. So I ended where that tail is. I am going to go ahead and place a marker uh, in that section, just so I know where the beginning of my round is going forward. So I'm just gonna hang it right there. So that's on that first needle of stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and trim um, this yarn, leave a little bit of a tail and I'm going to tie on the next color that I'm going to begin uh, doing my knit stitches with. And I'm going to use this Kate Celine speckled rainbow uh, sorbet yarn. So I'm just gonna make a knot. Just like that. I'm going to take my two tails and just drop them through the, the fingerless mitt like that so that they're just hanging out the bottom. This is my working yarn. It's the yarn that's attached to my ball. And I'm going to go ahead and just begin knitting around on every stitch.
Okay, so it just looks like this. Let's see if we can get that up closer. I will just continue knitting each stitch. I will continue knitting each stitch until I have the body of the fingerless mitt the length that I want it. If I want big slouchy sleeves I'll knit a lot of stitches and um, make it really tall. If I just want a smaller fingerless mitt I'll just knit you know however much I feel like I'd like. I am gonna go ahead and measure this so that I can tell you how long that is. This is my little notions pouch. So I made mine just a little over an inch. So you can make yours really long like two inches if you'd like a big cuff. I just kind of wanted a small cuff so that um, it was like just a super stretchy small cuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just continue knitting in the round and I will catch back up with you when I have more knit stitches on the mitt and then we'll do the next step. Okay, I'm at the end of my round, just coming up on my marker where I've knit each stitch all the way around. So we just go ahead and knit that stitch, just like that, and just continue around. Okay. All right, so I will catch back up with you when I've knit quite a bit on here. Okay, so now I am back. I have knit quite a bit on my mitts. Now you can make this as long as you like. If you want it like super long, you can do that. If you want it shorter, you can do that. I will go ahead and measure this and see where I'm at. Okay, so I'm at just under five and a half inches, maybe five and a quarter inches of knit stitch. And you can go ahead and make it however you would like, whatever fits you. And so now what we're going to do is do, um, we're going to do a thumb hole. And I'm just gonna make a button hole. I'm going to knit the first stitch. And then I'm going to bind off some stitches so that I can poke my thumb through this fingerless mitt while I'm wearing it. So I'm going to go ahead and knit two more stitches just so that I, I usually knit the first one and leave it on the needle and then I start the thumb hole after that just so that I have something on the needle before that. And then I take this stitch, the second stitch, and bring it, pick it up like that and bring it over that third stitch. So I have brought that second stitch over that third stitch and then I'm going to knit the next stitch and bring this second stitch over that next stitch. So what we're doing here is binding off. So then we knit the next stitch and then we pick up that stitch and bring it over the next stitch, just like that. There we go. And then we knit the next stitch. And then we pick up that stitch and bring it over the next stitch. So we're binding off so that we can stick our thumb through this hole. So I am going to need to do a few more stitches because my thumb is bigger than that hole. So 
So I will keep binding off until I see that the hole is clearly large enough for my thumb to fit through. That looks pretty good. I might do one more. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. So I had a total of 16 stitches on this needle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight left. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to knit. the rest of the stitches. Now I'm going to knit around the mitt each stitch until I get back to this hole. Okay, so we're back at our side with the one, two, four, six, seven, eight stitches and we want to make it 16 again because that's what it is on the rest of the mitt. And what we're going to do is go ahead and knit that first stitch. Just like that. Now we're going to cast on eight stitches. And how I'm going to do that is do this. I'm going to take the yarn over my finger and just put it on the needle like that. So there's one two, three, four, five. Okay, so now I've put eight stitches back on the needle. I casted them back on. That's, I think, referred to as the E cast on method. And then, We'll go ahead and, and knit the next stitch. And then continue to knit around. Okay, and so this is what it looks like right here. A little twisted at the beginning. Okay, there we go. Looks like that. So we have our um, buttonhole essentially, and it's going to be big enough for me to fit my thumb through. Now you can do seven stitches or six stitches, or if you're doing it for a child, even less stitches for the thumb hole, or more stitches, whatever works for you. All right, so we'll continue to knit around. just so you can see how we go ahead and continue knitting the top um, of that buttonhole. Okay, so we're back to the buttonhole. And now I usually try to tighten up this first stitch and I'll knit, so there's the hole right there for that first stitch. I will knit through that leg right there and this leg and I'll just do one knit stitch. And it kind of tightens up that first stitch. You don't have to do that. You can just knit through just the normal part of the top of the stitch if you like. There we go. Okay, so we just continue to knit each one of these little E-wraps. And just take your time. They're a little tricky to get the needle into. But once you get this row, you're fine.
Okay. All right, and so that's what it looks like. And you just continue to knit around as you were. So now we're knitting the top of the mitt. We're knitting, we're knitting the part where um, your thumb's in the hole and we're knitting from this part of your hand up to the top. So we can make that as far as we want because we're gonna go ahead and put a ribbing on the top again. And then I will be back to show you how we start the ribbing at the top. I went ahead and knit until I decided that I liked this much above the thumb hole. Let me go ahead and measure that and show you what I have on mine. But you'll just put it on and try it and see if it's where you'd like it. So really I just have an inch above my thumb hole because I'm going to then put ribbing above that. And so I'll just try it on for you and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got my thumb in the thumb hole, carefully with my needles in there, and I have it right here. So it, it the knitting goes up to about right here on my fingers and I'm going to start my ribbing so I can put in some nice ribbing right here and make it um, warm for the top of my fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to decrease one time on each needle. So I'm going to knit two together. I'm back at the where my heart is that is the beginning of the round. I'll just move that up there so you can see. So that's the beginning of my round is this needle. And I'm going to knit two together on the beginning of each um, needle. So I'll be decreasing by four stitches. So I'll knit two together there, and then I'll knit to the end of this needle. Okay, so I'm at the end of that needle, the beginning of the next needle, I'll go ahead and knit two together there. And this is just to bring in the mitt a little bit at the top. Because my fingers, the diameter around my fingers is um, smaller than the diameter around my arm or the palm of my hand. Okay, so I'll just continue on doing this on the other two needles until I get back to the heart. I'll knit two together on the first stitch, uh, the first two stitches of the needle. Like so, now I'm on the next needle. I'm going to knit two together on this one. And then on that last needle, I'll do the same. And I'll catch up with you when I get to the end. Okay, so I've done my uh, decrease on, on the first two stitches of each needle. So looking at my square again, I decreased by knitting two together here, 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 and here. Now I'm back to the beginning to where I put my marker. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is change colors because I'd like to make my ribbing a different color. And you don't have to do this, you can make it the same color, it's totally up to you. I'm going to use this color, which is a different color. The darker blue. Okay, so I just tied that on. Let me find my needle. Okay, and then the tail part of it, I will put just on the inside. Oops. 
we're going to go ahead and do um, the ribbing pattern again. So starting with two knits and then bring the yarn to the front and two purls. two knits and we're going to continue on around with the knits and the pearls the two knits and two pearls making a ribbing and when you get to the end of this row it's not going to be even like it was before because we did the decreases it's going to end with one pearl and we're going to go ahead and pick up one stitch from the next needle and purl that. Bring the yarn to the back and then start the knits on the next needle. So just continue on with your ribbing, doing the two knits and the two purls all the way around and continue on doing the ribbing until it's the length that you desire for your hand and then we'll go over the how to bind off. Okay so I just wanted to check in with you and show you how the ribbing is coming along and it of course the longer it gets it will pull in some more so I'm going to continue on with it and check back with you when it's a little bit taller. Okay so we're back and I am at a different location. I was away on a holiday, so I'm back recording the last little bit of this. So a little over an inch um, of ribbing of the mitt, which is the part that goes over the top of your hand. So now we're ready to bind off. And we're going to go ahead and knit one and then knit the second one and knit really loosely if you can and then slip the first one over the second one and then bring the yarn to the front and purl and I bring it to the back just to get it out of the way and then I slip that first one over the second one and that's called binding off and so we're doing another purl and so this is binding off in stitch or in you know the same stitch that you were just knitting in so we were because we were knitting the knit two purl two we would bind off like that and it would make it more stretchy now if if that was if you wanted to you just could bind off in the knit stitch you could do that as well um, this just makes it a little bit more stretchy if you have the time and if um, if you're able to, it's nice to bind off in pattern. So those were two knit stitches and then purl stitch. And really we're just doing it as loosely as we can so that we can keep it stretchy. And some people will even go up a needle size to do the bind off. You could do that too, so that you don't have to, you know, try to keep it loose. So I'll just continue to do this all the way around. Just doing the next stitch, whether it be knit or purl and then slipping the one before it over the top of it. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on just a little. So you can get a closer view of it. So the next stitch is a knit stitch. So we'll knit that. Bring that stitch over the knit stitch. The next two are purls. So we 
do one purl and I bring the yarn to the back just while I'm slipping it over. Bring it back to the front to do the next purl. that one and then we're going to the next needle bring the yarn to the front because we're back at some pearls again Okay, so you can see how this is going. We've got this bound off, stretchy ribbing. And I'm going to continue all the way around until I get to the last few stitches and then I will tune back in with you and we'll show you how to end it. Okay, so we're back to the end. And I just have two more pearls to bind off. So now we're left with just one stitch on the needle. Let me get our little scissors. Go ahead and cut the yarn. I'm going to just bring that yarn through that last stitch. You could do that with a needle, or I just flipped it up with the the needle that it was on and now we're just going to weave in the ends so I have woven in the ends let's remove our stitch marker I have woven in the ends on the other mitt and so it looks funky like that but I just bring it down like that let's see if I can get that to that I just bring it down like this Turn it inside out. And then on the inside of the rib, I just kind of sew it uh, or weave it back and forth with a, a needle just up the inside of the rib. You can do whatever you like. leave it just a little bit on there so that when it gets stretched it doesn't pop out okay and then there is one more set I'm just gonna flip this inside actually it looks like two more sets I had a, a break in my yarn right there but um, I just was gonna show you this sometimes when you tie on another color and of course you could do these mitts all in one color but uh, the the knot is kind of loose here. And so when I'm weaving it in, I go back and undo it and tie it, snug it up and tie it so that it looks nice like that. And then I weave it in. So, I mean, that's just what I do. So, of course, you might have your own way of doing it. I hope you can't hear my cat crying. Oh my gosh. Okay, and then you'll just go ahead and weave these in. Now 
these I just kind of weave um, back and forth like that through the bumps in the back of the stitches on the inside. Oops. Okay, I'll catch back up with you when I've woven both of these in. Okay, so this is what this pair looks like using um, the Kate Celine sock yarn and then the two um, different scraps that I had of West Yorkshire spinners for ply. So I love how they turned out. They're super cute. They have their little thumb hole and of course you don't need to worry about making one right or left. There's the thumb hole. You just kind of rotate it around so that they fit you. So I'll go ahead and show them to you. Hi, look how they turned out. I love them. They're super cute. Let's see, I can show them to you. I love them. I love the speckles. I like the different colors, but you can do whatever you'd like. So let me know if you make a pair. Bye. See you next time.